Um, welcome to the channel. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to tackle uh, aspect of showcasing uh, point location on your models. Um, here, I have a new, a brand new application uh, project. Sorry, Django project. Uh, we have a brand new Django project that you have just started. And um, in this uh, in this project, you can see, of course, I haven't done much. Just configuring the template path, the database, and the static files and the media files. Of course, um, I've done this in the past, so of course I know, maybe understand how to do it. So if you've not uh, maybe checked my previous videos on Geo Django, kindly do, because uh, um, this video, I'm working with an assumption that you've already, uh, you already know how to set up a, a Django project. So um, in here, you can see we are having uh, basically a PostGIS database uh, engine, and um, I want just to add the GIS uh, support option here. So I do Django .gis. So um, so I'm enabling the application of um, the GIS component so that you can work with uh, the Django module effectively. I'm going to start an application. So let me just uh, click uh, uh, click on manage. Then uh, start. Oh, sorry, start up. Let me just call it manager. Okay, so it's a sample project, and um, I have now have one application. Uh, it's called manager, and as you can see inside, it basically has the various files that come automatically when you uh, basically create these files or you create these uh, uh, applications on your Django project. So um, from there, let me just um, I just want so this is what I want us to do. I want us to look at. Uh, the options in which we can make our mapping components or our applications a bit um, beautified in terms of displaying the location and in this uh, specific example I'm going to use the point field. So I'm going to show you ways in which you can actually um, bring that um, a better interface or a better uh, component that basically can showcase something that is interesting or something that is visually appealing to the eyes. So um, let me go to the models directly. So here, I'm going to create. Um, so maybe you want to um, create a project that's tracking um, property. So maybe I have a, a model that basically looks at houses. So I'll do that, and then I can maybe uh, say uh, probably the uh, the name of the house uh, models dot car field. And uh, this one, uh, basically, let me just put 50. Um, then we can have maybe um, a house type. So, example. So, again, this one, I can just copy all that and have it here. Um, that. And then, um, our impo important uh, thing that we want to showcase is basically the location. So, I'll add a location here. And uh, one thing you have to note in uh, any Django project, I cannot do models dot point field. There's no such um, uh, a thing. So um, I have to basically import or inherit the GIS um, uh, model component. So I'll say I come here and say from Django dot uh, dot GIS um, dot. So here I can either opt to have. Um, to, to import everything in terms of uh, what is uh, maybe we are looking at DB here, so I import uh, models as GIS models. I think uh, you've seen me do this a lot in my tutorials. So here on the location, because it's a point field, of course a house will be a point field. Um, so I'm going to use GIS models dot point field. Now you see the moment I add GIS models point field is available. And one of the parameters or argument that we have to put in there is basically what we call an SRD. And uh, SRD is a, a special reference ID. So I'll just go with the usual, which is 4326, uh, which is basically uh, WGS84. And then, uh, yeah, so you can just uh, end there. We can just have, um, maybe we can add one last information, uh, which is basically owner. And again, I can just copy the character field there. And uh, that's it. So, um, 
Of course, we have other uh, components, for example, like this. I can just say return the name, the self of the name. Um, so these are just uh, adding some. We can also uh, basically add a meta class. So a boss um, a plural name, which basically says houses. All right. So now we have one model in our um, our, our application. And um, this is what is actually forming the basis of our discussion today, this field here. So um, from here, I'm just, uh, we need to register this on our admin because um, right now if I was trying the project and I came here, of course, uh, we have nothing displayed on the front end. So this is what you see. And um, if I go to the admin, um, if I load it, you basically not be able to see the houses that we just created. So um, to do that, we just come to the admin here and we'll say from models import uh, house, all right? And then we can register the model here. So we can say house admin um, and then, um, in most cases, there's usually a default, um, let me just do this, admin dot uh, model admin, I just showcase something. So here maybe I can say pass and then down here or even above here I like I prefer this other option of registering the models so I register register um, what am I doing um, admin dot register uh, then I have the house there okay so now if I was to save this and refresh this page here um, should ideally what happened? Let me see. Ah, sorry. I haven't migrated the, <laughs> the model. So, uh, I don't manage. Uh, ma let's make migration first. Make migrations. Um, yeah. I don't know whether you understand why this is happening. It tells me uh, no changes detected. And the reason as well this is happening is because we've not registered this manager um, application on our project. So to do that, I go to the settings file here, um, and within the installed apps, I'll just add our manager application. All right, some errors are good, they make us laugh. So there you are. So now if I try make migrations, I should get this. Uh, I made a mistake. This should be, uh, this should be name. Uh, I can just give it a start. Um, Yes, so now you see it has created the model called house in our, our DB. And now, if I was to run the server, and um, of course, it will tell me that I have some migrations that are not applied. Okay, so let me let us just go to the migrate. So, um, great, there you are. So now it has applied that and has created those, um, like it has migrated the. Uh, the, the the migrations that we just created are now in the DB and of course now we are good to go so if I run the server and now I refresh this page of course now you see our house is here so you can notice that there's a double S at the end this is what I was trying to use but um, of course if you wanted it to appear as is you can just do that and it should ideally now uh, show with one S so now, if I open this model and I try to add a house here, um, okay, so you can see what is happening. So I have a model, um, the model that we just created, the name, the house, the location here which looks so weird, and then the owner. Okay, so this is what I want us to happen. So you can imagine if you look at this part, it seems so weird in terms of you don't even know where you are on the globe. Even if you try to zoom out, of course, it will give you uh, now a good view. But uh, you can imagine if you are trying to locate a specific location. For example, this is Kenya here. Um, I'm near, for example, if I go to near the mountain. So you can see it's very hard for me to know where I want to place my point because it's a bit vague and it's a bit um, uh, like it, it, it's so much in terms of uh, whatever is displayed it's not very clear of where we are supposed to be. So if you are telling me to trace Nairobi, yes, I can try to trace Nairobi.
but it will be so tough for me to ideally uh, know where exactly it is on this map. So that's what uh, brings us to the components that I want to introduce you to. And uh, one of the components is called map widget. We are going to utilize map widget. And um, if you are to, uh, you can actually Google to check the documentation. And map widget enables you, or it gives you a better interface where you define the kind of uh, uh, the kind of uh, map uh, or the base map that you want to use. And it also gives you options of where uh, you can basically decide that I want specific coordinates or I want to place a cast at a specific location. Or you can actually search on a map, just like the way you do with uh, your Google Maps or Mapbox uh, uh, projects. So to do that, let's quickly install a map widget. So I'll go to pip install uh, Django. So of course, you have to know how, uh, uh, if you check its documentation, you can of course come here and uh, look for Django uh, map widgets. It's a cool... Uh, package so if you look at its documentation i think i have a typo there yeah there should be a space here so right good now it has installed that so now i can i will just like it to be on on ram so if you look at the documentation here, it's quite straightforward um, i've been using this for years i've been using this uh, for even some of the tutorials that i've done before i think i showcased it and you should be clear on how you're supposed to use it so um in the, my option i'm going to use google uh, map so you can of course see uh, the installation guide just installed it we just uh, saw how uh, someone's supposed to work with it and all that and we just need to basically now um, go on and do the rest in our application so um the first thing whenever you install a package uh, in django um the first thing you have to do is basically come to the settings here and just say that you want to um add that application under the installed apps one so you can save that and then of course um map widgets uh define some parameters or some settings that you need to add on your project for you to be able to use that um to be able to use map widgets on your project so it's quite straightforward and um if you look at the map widgets component here um you can see the first thing actually before you use any package in your project always be checking on their github repository to ensure that um everything is up to date um you don't you, you would not want to have a project that basically um is probably not maintained anymore or um project that changed so probably to change the ownership or something changed so you see it's seven years ago but i can see six months ago i can see uh yeah six months ago so i know that at least there are some changes that are happening to the to the package okay so from there um you can basically come here so i'm using i'm going to use the google map option uh because it also require you're going to consume the google maps api as i mentioned you can do the search whatever you can see here this is the functionality i want us to have on our maps and it's, it's very very easy for, to do that there's a setting option here so i'll just copy this bit here and uh, paste it on my settings i like let me just push to the end there. Yeah. So um, you can see we have a, a point field uh, widget. Of course, default to zoom is 15. The map center location, it is says London. So yeah, I would want it to change. I would want to, to have, um, instead of uh, London, let me have Nairobi. And then the country here, I'll have KE. Then uh, the fit zoom, scroll wheel. Uh, this one, I can have it as true. Then the street view, yes, is by default by true. So there's one thing that you are required when you're consuming Google Maps API. For any time you are developing your application using Google Maps API, of course, you are required to have a key. So uh, to get a key, just go to the Google Maps API uh, website, register an account, and get your key. And then you will be able to paste that uh, key here. Okay. So I already have a key because I've been doing this for years. So let me just uh, get that key and it here all right so now i have my key here as you can see and uh, this is a key that i'll be able to use for my uh my map and from there they, we just need to do one more thing which is basically to now tell this admin uh on here that we are now uh, we want to have the widget for the google 
um, for the map widget, that is. And it will be using the Google Maps API to display that map for us. So, if you again, if you go back to the documentation, it is very straightforward. It will just give you a straightforward uh, feed on how we want to do. And as you can see here, they have an option that says um, Django admin. So, um, if you just uh, use that, you basically, for example, if I just pick this, um, and I just paste it here on my um, my admin. So of course it will tell me that um, models are missing. We're going to import that in a few. And of course this is also missing. So just to import that, let's start with the uh, uh, map widgets. Import uh, Google. Uh, I think it should be. Ah, sorry. Yeah, it's map widgets dot widgets. Um, then we import uh, Google. Oh, don't mind. They have to ten cents. It's not fine enough. But there you are. And then for the model, this is the usual um, option that we usually have here. So this one here. So we just need to have uh, from Django. The auto typos. Maybe import models. All right. So there we are. So now we have. Uh, two imports that we've done. The one is for the models, of course, that is usually in Django. And then the next one, or the most important one on this page, is basically this one. So with this, we just be able to see uh, the map change to the widget. So let's see. Um, of course, um, yeah, this one now again, the issue that we were talking about. So models do not have uh, the point field by default. So we have to do the import that we did. So Django. Uh, .contrib.gis.db import models as uh, gis uh, models so here now instead of model we have gis models and there you are so now everything now should work so let's go back to our application and refresh this page wow look at that so this looks even more appealing and it even looks a bit um uh, it looks more appealing and better in terms of uh, the display and the good thing with this is that I can comfortably type here and say maybe if I'm looking at a Hilton hotel in Nairobi or whatever, 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 I'm able to get it. For example, if I was uh, looking at KICC as a house, I can just click on that and it will pinpoint that for me. So I don't need to know where KICC is basically because um, the other map had a lot of issues. And we had to do a lot of uh, zooming in, zooming out, and to expect someone to be a magician, <laughs> basically, to, to know that. Okay, so now um, we already have now the map itself, and of course, now we can feel like I can say this is KICC, it's uh, government owned, and of course, it's government. I'll type it government, government, and we already have that point, and I now can even say it. And there you are. So, you see, it's very straightforward, and um, uh, it's very straightforward, and you can actually uh, be able to use that in any of your project. But remember, this map widget option only works for point field. So, if you had a uh, multi polygon, or you had another option like line, uh, multi line, um, uh, line options, then of course, those ones um, will not be fit for this. So, this is specifically for a point uh, field. Yeah. The other package that I wanted to show you, it's a package called uh, Django Location Field. So this one even adds more, um, it adds some more um, uh, abilities to your map or to your application. And again, it's um, six years ago, 10 months ago, two months ago. So it shows you it's an active uh, repository, meaning the maintainers or the contributors are what we working on it. So, of course, as I mentioned, don't use a package that is outdated. For example, if you find something that is uh, four years ago, five years ago, that is something that would actually have compatibility issues with your application, right? So now we have this one here. And um, again, it, they are very easy to use. That's the uh, thing I like mostly about uh, these Python packages. Um, it's usually very, very easy to use. And you can actually see it's giving you all the uh, information or the points that you need to basically uh, use or, or follow. So um, without wasting time, let me just copy that and uh, uh, 
uh, do install that. And of course, it tells us to add this to uh, installed maps, uh, sorry, installed apps. There you have it. So from there, it just tells us that we need to change. So now in this case, um, for purposes of, because this one is using a number of uh, fields to basically um, have the capability that you need to use. So of course, um, you've seen that um, we have allocations field in our, uh, in our uh, model but it's in a different type of, um, or in a different um, uh, form. This is GS models that point field. For this case, uh, where you're using the jump allocation field, of course, uh, it tells you that they are, the, it's, it's, it's outline or its usage is a bit different. So um, there are decisions that you have to make in the beginning when you're starting a project. Which method do you want to use? Do you want to use the method that is brought by the map widgets or do you want to use the option that is now within the jungle um, location field? So this is what I'm talking about. As you can see, it's a bit different. So if I was to copy this, let me just uh, uh, copy the whole of that. And this is what I'm going to use. So I don't want to remove this support here uh, for purposes of the project or the application. So let me just get a different model. Let me just call it uh, as it is, place. And then we can see we have two things that we need to import. So there's the location field and we have the point. Okay, uh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, so we need to basically get these two lines here, uh, this one. And we can now, we can even add them here, whatever. Uh, automatically it should be, oh, sorry, what did I do? Sorry. All right, so let me just paste them here. There you are. So now we've seen that the error is gone. So, and then of course there's a city. So what this uh, location field does, uh, it basically uh, takes this city as a name and then it's able to use it within the location field to determine the coordinates or the location of that specific city. So of course these coordinates here, I can try to bring them near home. Um, then of course these ones you can change or it's just optional I'm just doing this for fun all right then of course uh let's add this um i like a lot of sometimes repetition let me just copy paste that so let's have city and then of course we have the place and then again remember we need to register this on our admin so that we are able to see it on that other side so here yeah, I'll just go directly to admin.register and of course we need to import it here. So uh, let me just import that. So we register the place. All right, and then um, here I can have a typical class. So place admin, um, and then of course we can have any uh, form of admin there. And then I can just take this, all right? So now you can see um, there are two options here. You can either have a special database or one who does not have a special database. Remember in our project we're using PostGIS, so basically we have a special database. So we have, that's why we choose this option. All right. So from there, let's see. Um, of course, because our project we just uh, we are only having houses on this side. So let's again run migrations. Um, okay, let's do for make migrations. Uh huh. Let's say six. Uh, to, for example, if we have to do uh, pip install six, it won't basically do. Oh, yeah. So the package. Okay. So let me see. Ah, good. So it created the model. Um. Let me migrate. All right. So now, if I was to run this server, um, I should ideally now be able to see my place model. Uh, all right, so we have the place here, and let's try to add a, a place. You see, uh, look at how uh, this happens. So at the, by default, if you notice, these coordinates are the ones that we uh, added to the model by default. These ones here. Okay, so of course. Um, we have the city as the, the name here, then we have the, the location. So this is the, the default location. So we have the place model here. You can just click on place. Let's try to add a place. 
And if you notice this by default, this is the coordinates that we provided here by default, um, and then the location, but it's not this map. There's a setting that we need to do on our settings file, so we'll go there in a bit. But ideally, the, the idea that we just want to show you in this is if I want to type Nairobi, for example, and hit enter, the coordinates change. And of course, you're not very sure whether this is Nairobi or that because someone has to know the coordinates of type. But uh, of course, as you can see, the marker has changed its location. So let's go to our settings file and um, the settings that we need to place for this new um, uh, the Django location field is basically this. So the provider, of course, is Google API. You can see there is an outright uh, uh, link that you have. And then, of course, we can utilize the same API key that we had here and have them there. Right. So now, if I was to basically refresh this page, I should be able to get a map with the Google Maps base map. So yeah, there you are. So you can see um, by people, these are the coordinates of where we placed that map. Uh, sorry, where we placed it on the on the models. And now I have a new um, um, uh, base map. So if I was to say maybe Nakuru, of course you see, I the moment I type, it automatically changes here, and the coordinates also change outside. So. This is another way you can use um, uh, these packages for your advantage. I don't know which one works best for you, but as you can see, this one, the moment I type something, Mombasa, of course, it, the cursor, sorry, the marker moves uh, automatically and the coordinates change. So um, remember, in the, um, in the houses option, let me just open the houses option. When adding a house, you also provided with multiple options. You can use um, the edit coordinates, or uh, basically uh, input your latitude longitude, use your location. Uh, if you maybe you're using a mobile phone or something of the sort, um, you can choose a point on the map. The choosing map point on the map is basically clicking on that button and uh, placing your cursor where you want that uh, cursor to appear. And the best of them all is usually the search here. So this is what I like the, uh, most about this. I've been using it for quite a while, and. It's like uh, you're using a Google Maps in your application. So these are the two applications. Um, or we can basically call them packages that I wanted to show you. And as you can see, these are basically um, good packages in terms of showcasing or using the data that you want to have on your map or your project, uh, like a beautified kind of approach. So. You can see the two of them. Um, probably the others haven't used any other, but um, of, of course, there's the leaflet uh, geo admin, but the leaflet geo admin does not have the capabilities that uh, is um, uh, portrayed by some of these tools here. But you can see, um, you, the, if you remember the initial interface that we had for the map, and whatever we have now, or what we have on, under our, our house. This is much, much better to use and it's easy to use for everybody. So if you have any question of uh, any package that you want to showcase, uh, let me know. I'm able to, to do that for you. And if you have any questions about these packages, let me also know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be uh, posting quite of these tutorials uh, often. So cheers, have fun.